is a truly heartbreaking story. Well, for more on this refugee crisis, I'm joined by Nancy Limburg. She's the president of the U.S. Institute for Peace. Uh, Nancy, I mean, Ali's story, losing all seven children, unthinkable, and a sign of how awful life must be for the people to take that risk with their children. It's a sign of the extraordinarily tough choices that they're having to make that they would even consider risking their lives and the lives of their children. And it also underscores that this is not fundamentally a refugee crisis. It's a crisis around the raw wound of Syria and other conflicts that are creating these hard choices for refugees. We had thought that come winter with the weather getting worse, the journey getting more perilous, perhaps the flow would stop, but that doesn't seem to be the case, does it? It's not, and it's because the fundamental problem hasn't seized in any way. We haven't moved on a peace process, although there are very hopeful signs even just today, and we still need to do more and better assistance to enable them to stay in the region, not just surviving, but really having a future for their children. Hundreds of thousands have already come to Europe, but it does seem that it's not just the weather that's getting colder, the political climate is getting colder for these refugees as well. Just in the past few weeks, we've had what, Serbia, Slovenia, Croatia, and Macedonia all putting up restrictions to the refugees. What does that mean for them if, they, if Europe becomes, starts to close its doors? It, it's a terrible, uh, it's a terrible reaction. It doesn't really uh, speak to the reality of the vitality that refugees can bring to these economies. Uh, but it does mean the importance of redoubling assistance in the region, in the neighboring states of Turkey, of Jordan, of, of um, Lebanon, where with additional assistance, uh, many refugees really don't want to leave the region. They still harbor hopes of going home, but they need to have opportunities for their children. They need to be able to make a living. And so far, only about 50 percent of the assistance required for the Syrian conflict has been raised despite these terrible stories. You mentioned there the, the prospect of peace talks. That will, of course, take quite some time. And in the meantime, we have another winter to get through for the people who have already left. Uh, the aid situation has not been particularly good in previous years. What's the donor situation at the moment? Are people giving enough for the refugees? No, is the short answer. There has been an extraordinarily generous uh, support coming from both Europeans and Americans and others, but the needs are rising faster than the donations. And we also are uh, still a bit stuck in thinking of this as a short-term right. crisis when this has to go far beyond provision of basic food, water, shelter, we have to look at how to help refugees create a viable future, get their kids educated. Um, many of these children have been out of school for five years. You need to enable them to have a viable future and not be vulnerable to the kind of hopelessness that extremists prey on. Okay, Nancy Limbaugh, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you, Caddy. Donald Trump has called off a planned trip to Israel this month, saying he would reschedule.